<laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Go Mango Anime Cast. Uh, tonight we're going to be reviewing Darling in the Franks, Episode 5. I'm your host, Mako Toa, and with me today we have... The Sender Blaze. Okay, so uh, we're coming in... <laughs> Sorry if you were looking forward to our episode 4 review, um, we kind of lost timing for it, uh, I'm blaming TokuCast, is that good with you? I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. Alright, um, other school things too, but, uh, at least we got this one out relatively on time, hopefully. Um, at any rate, episode 5, uh... We didn't actually have any mech fights this episode. I believe the whole episode was kind of the uh, the main thing going on was the uh, their their base, their home base was going to kiss another home base. Kissing. Yep. Um, another one of those so subtle references to sexual stuff in this show. Yeah, but you know it's not sexual in their world right now, so it's totally fine. Yeah, they don't even really understand what kissing is. So, um, I really loved this episode. This is the episode that's actually, I think, more than the first one. Because the first one had that initial hype, you know, when you saw him, you know, Shinji pilot the mech, right? <laughs> yeah. But this episode, especially for me, because we actually got some depth. We actually got some unexpected twists. We actually got, like, some side characters doing some stuff. Yeah, uh, this probably had the most world building out of any of the episodes, like including the first one. But it yeah. was like a lot more like subtle. It wasn't just like, oh, there's these dinosaurs that they have to fight occasionally. It was mm -hmm. like, uh, it was right after like the whole parade where, you know, I think they just graduated out of their class. They had and a celebration know, too, yeah, something yeah. like that. And you just have like all the kids kind of like, you know, especially like, like the young bully kid I forgot his name already mm -hmm. but uh he came around this episode like he was being like despite how much of a tool he was in the early episodes <laughs> like him actually like you know acknowledging hero after you know he kind of like fought with them and saved his ass <laughs> mm -hmm. so it, it was nice seeing the group kind of get along a little bit better um minus the stuck up uh rich kid looking guy but yeah. he's still going that's that's another thing he's got his own issues going on as like a subplot this episode we touched on it here and there where he was like off by himself taking some medication i don't know if it was to heal from the injuries that he sustained when he piloted the mech with uh zero two a few episodes ago or if it was like i don't know him taking some drugs or something it was probably the medication but yeah i think they mentioned something uh where they checked out um, one of their cells. I think mm -hmm. it was Heroes. And his uh, reaction to piloting with Zero Two was that he had a abnormally high yellow blood cell count. Oh, so that I'm was, yeah, our protagonist. Yeah, so I'm assuming... Uh, and they said that that was like the opposite of what happened with the usual people. So I'm assuming yeah. that the stuck-up dude has like a deficiency of that yellow blood cell. And that might mm. lead to, you know... That might be significant mm -hmm. later on in the series because from what we can tell so far, these guys probably aren't normal humans to begin with. Like, Yeah, it's like this... becoming more and more clear that because especially when we had this other group of pe of kids come in that were like more standard military soldier kids, yeah. they didn't have names, they didn't have uh, customized mechs either, and they were kind of like aloof as a group. You know, they all have these... I guess quirks about them so i i it you know whereas first going into the show it could have been like oh this is just another standard group of random kids but no this apparently is the uh, more exception to the rule yeah which makes me like kind of want to root for them more <laughs> as a group uh the the new or our current group or the other group that we saw this episode our current group not the like the the second you know the yeah like the uniform ones, ones. Yeah. yeah no no not them i want to root for the the ragtag group over here that we've come to love mostly <laughs> yeah and 
<clears throat> Speaking of rooting for people, like right after that whole like celebration <laughs> kind of scene, uh, Ichigo and um, Hiro start like walking down this the stairs during this scene. Yeah, yeah. And like she goes to kind of like reach his collar, and then he just like flips out because like he doesn't want anyone to kind of know that he's like feeling awful because oh, he's ridden yeah, with O2. That makes... That makes so much sense now why he was so, like, on edge by that. I was like, why is he get? Why is he so, like, against her coming near him anymore? And I guess I didn't even think because later in the episode we have a reveal where, he, yeah, he's got some freaking, like, blue growth on his chest that looks like it's killing him or potentially going to transform him into another, you know, creature because, honestly, with his yellow blood count, I wouldn't doubt that that's going to be the plot twist <laughs> Instead yeah. of him dying. You can turn but... into like a Klaxosaur or something. Nothing right. like that. <laughs> Especially grow since... horns, right? Yeah. Especially since Zero Two has all that stuff too. So she right. might be and like grooming they've... her next mate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've already uh, consummated twice. So usually... <laughs> okay, let's not have to go too far with those. But I mean... Uh, like they did have like that whole scene where uh, they were like... At least Zero Two was feeding Hero... <laughs> yeah, and then, and then everyone's, like uh, everyone's like, I want to do that, <laughs> and then like the blonde chick's already doing it with the fat guy, and I'm just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love how like they don't really do anything, but they're just like enjoying themselves, as, right? Like, even like in their own separate unit, like they're the one partner, <laughs> or that like you know, there's no they real issues to... between yeah, them. Yeah, like cool. <laughs> yeah, and uh, mm-hmm. like even with like the little like loud dude, he's like. Uh, when Goro's all like, why don't you get your partner to feed you? And he's like, no, I don't want my partner to feed me. I want, like, that chick over there because she's a cute. cute girl, though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, like, despite, like, her giving, like, the usual, like, retort, you know, like, like this, that smile he gave is <laughs> such a troll. <laughs> uh, I really love the development we got from um, the roommate or Ichigo's uh, Goro? partner. Y- yeah. Because I remember uh, the last review we did, which was probably episode three, you were mentioning how he was such a nothing character. So I'm glad that they've changed that. Um, now he seems to actually be more involved, uh, emotionally at least. Yeah, and they did it like in a really neat way. Uh, it was just like a super subtle thing. It wasn't like they just kind of like forced it. Yeah. Like he, it's like a usual thing with like roommates. Like, like, all right, we have to go get up for, you know, our usual thing. And then you just see him kind of, like, sweating in bed and kind of, like, feeling or looking super ill. And yeah. it was, like, that really, like, natural thing that actually just, like, blew up into an actual problem instead of just, like, forcing a problem that would just, like, mm-hmm. force him to be part of uh, the issue of the episode and just force screen time onto him. It just slowly became... Yeah, it was only natural that, like, if he was your childhood friend and stuff, that he would be concerned for you. Yeah, right. like, it started <laughs> off as a small problem, and it grew later on in the episode. Yeah. And so did his involvement in screen time in the episode, and it was like, wow. That actually felt, like, normal. He, like, he wasn't, like, invasive in the series. So, like, yeah. I got offended because, like, what is this nothing character doing? <laughs> Taking <laughs> screen time from, like, Hero and o- uh, Zero Two and Ichigo. But... You no, did... now I'm almost uh, shipping him with Ichigo a little bit. Uh, you gotta stop that because <laughs> you're gonna make me feel bad. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, like he he did have really good moments with her because uh, mm-hmm. you know, like despite him being the partner formally, he hasn't really yeah. done anything that would like make you think that he wasn't just like a third wheel to uh, hero in Ichigo, like mm-hmm. in their friend group. But you know. When she was like yelling at Zero Two, and then he was the one that like was actually like watching and like gave her the towel thing. I was like, "Oh yeah, he was there for her." Hey, uh, stop talking like that. <laughs> uh, dang, and like I mean, it, it during the elevator scene, even like uh, Ichigo was able to sort of confide some stuff to him. Like they, I mean, they're partners, so it makes sense that they know each other decently enough where they can talk about it. But and they're both friends with um hero so it's just what do you what did you think about the interactions between zero two and um and ichigo though because there were a couple of interactions we had like the room the 
where Ichigo was showing her around the room and telling her, you know, to take care of Hiro, and then she's like, yeah, you don't need to, I don't need you to tell me that. He oh. belongs to me. Yeah. Like, by the way, he's mine. <laughs> like, yeah, Zero Two wasn't being really subtle <laughs> about this, but like, uh, she was like being really clear in her intentions. Well, like, mm-hmm. Ichigo was kind of just trying to hide it this entire, like, this entire episode, honestly, until like the very end. And I was like, wow, like, that was, that was like the confrontation I actually wanted, like, right mm-hmm. after, uh, kind of, Ichigo feeling jealous in like the second and third episodes where she like kind of forces uh, Hiro to go like ride with her and then that turning into like a total disaster like she kind of like still bordered like some like hatred for Zero Two and like that whole situation <laughs> and then that kind of like blew up it went to a stock of Nagoro uh, at the very end I was like, I, I'm not gonna lie when Ichigo slapped Zero Two that was satisfying yeah, like, like I felt like Ichigo's frustration and all of that, mm-hmm. like their interaction or her and Hiro's inter- uh, interactions felt really natural, and like the kind of like inf- affection she had for him was also something that we've seen and we've kind of like we understand. So when that actually happens, when she's like, it's like, oh yeah, Hiro is mine. Like, we understand like how pissed off that. Uh, your face uh ichigo is i was like (laughs) she's gotta do something she can't just take Mm -hmm. this for the entire series and she's like Uh no she just like slaps her and she kind of like she slaps the thing off of her horns and oh yeah for a second there like you know how uh a lot of anime characters are super melodramatic when it comes to their dark side but for that moment she actually did look like a monster even though it was just horns I thought she was going to try and kill Ichigo or something, dude. Like, I had no idea what was going to happen. Because, you know, we knew that uh, the other dude was watching, so he could have potentially stepped in to save her. So I don't think her life was necessarily in danger, but I could have seen, like, I wouldn't have doubted that she could have, like, overpowered Ichigo and yeah, tried like, to strangle there was, her or something. There was definitely, like, a death flag around yeah. there. Yeah. But thankfully, we didn't like hit it because like it was totally possible that she could have just died like right there. Mm. But uh, who knows what they have planned for like Ichigo's character for yeah. now? So like it's not like they're done with her, but that would have been no. real twist. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, later on, and like towards the end of the episode, we had uh, Hero go see Zero Two, and she's like yeah i know you're dying at this point you still want to pilot with me he's like yep oh and by the way your your disgusting like ailment looks beautiful by the way like <laughs> yeah like that's uh i think they like refer to it as badge in like the preview for next episode or maybe mm-hmm. it's like the name for this episode i don't really know what that is but i feel like it can work for either <laughs> what did you think how at the end were uh or Zero Two just kind of dances around and laughs maniacally. <laughs> I feel After like he's uh, like, "Yeah, I'll kill myself for you." Like honestly, when I saw that, I felt like that's something like a Fujo would probably project themselves onto <laughs> and be delusional with. <laughs> but that's just me being pessimistic and like I don't know. <laughs> that's yeah. how I saw it. Like she's she has like these yandere type of tendencies right now, mm-hmm. and I don't know how they're gonna take. <laughs> take it like yeah and i think uh, oh go go ahead ahead. i mean i think hero is is uh he's very predictable right now because he's only ever wanted one thing and you know death was the alternative anyways so it's pretty easy for him to pick his path um i'm (laughs) after whatever happens the next episode and we find out what happens to him then i think we're gonna go into some more nuance with his character decisions but right now it's just he's pretty straightforward with what he wants yeah and actually that (laughs) reminded me of one other thing that happened when they were discussing uh like the suits and how like uh our squads is unique yeah Uh, the little the little loud dude was all like uh so has anyone in your squad uh grown up to be an adult and right there i was like hmm yeah that's something that they probably don't (laughs) like consider like there's no family units that they've ever been exposed to right like 
uh, all these like adults and authority figures they feel like they're all super fishy like they're super controlling all the children Mm -hmm. like they don't let um hero pilot the thing because it could like mess up like some grand scheme it's not like uh they're kind of forced to in a way you know it's like all the children are part of like this grand experiment and also what was the whole what was like he the the other guy was like oh so they haven't told you Oh, Oh, oh don't worry about it that's that was the thing that caught my attention it was almost like what does he know that you know these these children you know the children are pretty much disposable so none of them ever make it to adulthood or what like well we've had seen like some adultish looking people like ride with like zero two for example oh that's right there was that one guy yeah oh but it might be something different for like these orphans or something yeah so they're this... probably an enigma in themselves curious uh also like what happened to uh hero's original partner like she kind of got shipped off does she like I was go back to like regular society and grow up to be a, an actual adult while these <laughs> kids are kind of stuck in this prison just fighting claxosaurs for some reason that we don't even know yeah so that's like like they had like all these like small world building details like just thrown in here and it was kind of like weaved really nicely with like that one like main thing about like you know hero possibly you know being affected really poorly by uh yeah. piloting with zero two like that <laughs> that kind of like blue like scar thing that looks yeah that looks I like don't... it's gonna kill someone that lo- yeah <laughs> like it really like increases the stakes for the next episode but we know he's yeah. not gonna die so we we're kind of like left in the dark as to what is actually gonna happen I, yeah i i yeah. I can't help but think it's gonna like cocoon him, and then he's gonna transform into a hybrid too, or something. I don't know, but yo, if he gr- gets horns and stuff, I think he'll <laughs> look pretty dang cool. So... Yeah, I don't know if they've got the guts to do something like that though. Yeah, but I'm good. We good? Yeah, I think that's a good. Th- this is a good. We... This was a good episode, so we're all good. Um, what did you guys think? Was it good? comment below subscribe if you want to hear us more hopefully we'll keep on uh, pace this time and especially as things have been ramping up because up till about now things have kind of been a little slow with the show but i think things are really starting to pick up especially with the new stakes and character development going around world building like alex was saying but yeah uh comment like give us a subscription we got a discord chat come say hi Um, until next time, yeah? Yep, see ya. Alright, later.